Welcome to Adisla, and this is your ultimate guide to choosing the perfect telescope for astrophotography. Astrophotography has exploded with options. From time-tested Newtonians to cutting-edge astrographs and premium refractors like quintuplets, petsfalls, and APOs, there's a whole universe of gear out there. But with so many choices, it's easy to get lost. Confused about what really suits your goals, your gear, and your sky, you're in the right place. In this video, we're skipping the spec sheet overload and taking you through a real-world, hands-on approach to picking the perfect astrograph. Whether you're upgrading, switching styles, or just trying to make sense of it all, let's cut through the clutter and find what truly works for you. Let's start with a question that matters more than aperture or focal length. Who are you under the stars? Because your telescope journey doesn't begin with gear specs. It begins with you, your lifestyle, your curiosity, your comfort with technology. At Edisla, we've identified five key astrophotography personas. As we describe them, try to see where you fit. First up, the stargazer turned imager. Maybe you're someone who's spent time at the eyepiece. You know your way around the constellations. You've owned a Dobsonian or a basic refractor. And now you want more. You want to capture what you've seen and share it with others. Next, the photographer first. You've chased the Milky Way with a DSLR. You've framed star trails over forests or caught moonrises by the sea. You know how to work with light and exposure, but now you want to aim higher. You're ready for galaxies, nebulae, and deep sky. You're not new to photography, just new to astronomy. Then there's the explorer who wants ease. You value simplicity. You don't want to wrestle with cables and collimation. You want a telescope that connects to your phone, centers your target, and gets the job done. For you, the joy is in the image, not in the process. You're here for the results, not the rituals. Or maybe you're the opposite. You love the process. The engineering. The code. You've read up on mounts, firmware, filters. You like assembling, testing, tweaking. For you, control is part of the art. Every button and setting is an invitation to learn more. You're not just buying a telescope, you're building a system. You're the tech tinkerer. And finally, maybe you're just beginning. You don't know what a coma corrector does. You've never tried long exposures but you're fascinated by the stars and you're ready to dive in. You want the right path, not random opinions. You want guidance without jargon. You're the curious beginner. So identify your primary persona because it will guide every decision we make next. Next, let's talk about your targets because the sky is vast and not every telescope fits every mission. What do you dream of capturing? Are you drawn to wide field shots? Those breathtaking images where the Milky Way stretches across the night sky? Or vast nebulae fill the frame with glowing clouds of gas and dust? For these kinds of images, you'll want to set up with a short focal length, wide field of view, and a solid tracker to keep your stars sharp. Or maybe galaxies are your calling. Faint, distant, packed with structure that's hidden deep in the dark. To reveal their beauty, you'll need a longer focal length, excellent stability, and long integration time. These targets are challenging, but the reward is worth it. Do the planets excite you? The moon, Jupiter, Saturn, with their craters, swirling storms, and razor-sharp edges. For these, it's all about high magnification, steady seeing conditions, and precise, high-quality optics. Or maybe you love the thrill of the hunt, chasing fast-moving objects like comets, asteroids, or satellites. These require quick setups, accurate tracking, and a bit of agility. There are also bright deep sky objects, the famous Messier targets, Orion, the Pleiades, globular clusters, and more. Many of these can be captured even from light polluted skies, making them perfect if you're just getting started or shooting from your backyard. Now think about how you wanna shoot. Maybe portability is a priority. You want a setup you can hike with, travel with, or pack for a flight. Something light, compact, and ready to go wherever you do. Or maybe you're dreaming of something more permanent, a fully remote observatory that works while you sleep, capturing hours of data from a dark sky site every clear night without lifting a finger. All of these choices, what you shoot, where you shoot, and how often you shoot, shape the kind of gear that's right for you. A large 10-inch Newtonian and a small refractor are both incredible tools, but they serve very different purposes. So pause for a moment and ask yourself, what are the top one or two kinds of targets you're most excited about? Because what you choose to shoot will define how you shoot. 
Now that we've explored who you are, what you want to capture, and where you'll be shooting from, it's time to focus on something just as critical, your imaging workflow. There are four common approaches to capturing the night sky, and generally the more automated you go, the more it costs. First, the fully manual workflow. This is for the hands-on explorer. You polar align by eye, navigate with star charts, and manually frame each target. No automation, no shortcuts, just pure immersive astronomy. It's slow, yes, but deeply satisfying. Next, the semi-automated setup. Maybe you've got a go-to mount, a DSLR, or a simple astro camera. You use software to plate solve or tweak focus, but you're still involved at every step. It's a balance, part tech, part touch. Then comes full automation. A controller like ASI Air, Stella Mate, or even a mini PC running Nina takes over most of the heavy lifting. Polar alignment, framing, guiding, focusing, all streamlined into a tap and go experience. If you want to dive deeper, check out our dedicated video on astrophotography controllers. And finally, the remote or robotic workflow. Your setup is permanent, maybe on your rooftop or at a dark sky observatory. You operate everything over the internet. It runs while you sleep. It's powerful, efficient, and completely hands-free. So ask yourself, how much do you like to tinker? How much time do you want to spend setting up? And how much do you want to automate? Because your telescope isn't just a tool, it's part of your ecosystem. And it should fit the way you like to work. Before we dive deeper into gear, let's talk about something equally important. Your experience level. Here is a simple framework. From level 0 to level 5 that helps define where you are and what gear makes sense for you. Level zero, total beginner. You've never used a telescope. Maybe you've watched the stars, maybe not. You're starting fresh and that's perfectly okay. You'll be building your skills from the ground up with no bad habits to unlearn. Level one, smart scope user. You've used a sea star, dwarf, or an EV scope. Everything was easy and automated, point, tap, and shoot. You've seen what's possible with minimal setup, and now you're curious about better optics and more control. Level 2, Visual Observer. You've used a Dubsonian or a manual Altaz mount. You know how to find objects using star maps or apps. You've spent time under the sky, but you haven't done any serious imaging yet. Level 3, Manual Equatorial. You've used a basic EQ mount, maybe for visual work. You've balanced it, polar aligned manually, and tracked objects by hand. You understand the sky and the mechanics, which gives you a strong foundation. Level 4, Star Tracker Imager. You've used a portable star tracker with a DSLR. You've learned to polar align in the field, plan targets, stack subs, and maybe even process a bit. You've felt the thrill and the frustration of wide field imaging. Level 5, Semi-Automated Astrophotographer. You're already capturing deep sky objects with a go-to mount. You use plate solving and guiding maybe an ASI Air or Nina setup, you understand back focus calibration frames gain in sensor size, you're dialed in but still growing. Level 6, Full Automation Pro. Frankly, this video isn't for you. Please come teach us your wizardry. Each of these levels isn't a badge, it's a compass. So ask yourself, honestly, which level are you really at? Because everything from here forward, telescope type, mount pairing, workflow, accessories, depends on this. You've got a clear sense of who you are, your experience level, your goals, your workflow style. Now it's time for the main part. Let's explore telescope types. Let's start with one of the friendliest faces in the lineup. The APO refractor. Sharp. Color pure. Low maintenance. Think of it like a prime lens. Simple, clean, and incredibly effective. Perfect for wide field and mid-scale targets like nebulae and open clusters. Lightweight, travel ready, and beginner welcoming. If you're just starting out or want reliability with zero fuss, this one's hard to beat. But maybe you're chasing performance. Enter the Newtonian astrograph. These scopes offer large apertures, fast focal ratios, and unbeatable value. They're powerful, especially for imaging faint galaxies or nebulae. But make no mistake, they require attention. You'll need to collimate. Balance carefully. Tinker with the details. It's like owning a performance car. It's like thrilling when it's tuned, demanding when it's not. Then there's the SCT, the Schmidt Cassegrain. Compact, powerful, and versatile. Think of it as a zoom lens for the sky. Capable of high magnification for planets and tight galaxies, but also usable across a range of targets. 
Still, it has its quirks, mirror flop, long cooldown times, and sometimes tricky focusing. It rewards patience and experience. And when you're ready for the serious deep sky work, meet the Richie Creation. This is a professional imagers tool designed for flat fields and no coma. But it's not plug and play. It demands precise spacing, stable setups, and an advanced workflow. Perfect for permanent observatories or remote robotic setups. This is where you go when galaxies and details are your obsession. But maybe your sights are closer. The mech suit of Cassegrain steps in with elegance. It's compact, rugged, and offers tack-sharp views of the moon and planets. It's not built for deep sky. The narrow field and long focal length limit that. But for high contrast, high magnification work, it's a quiet powerhouse. Now let's talk convenience. The Petsval and Quad Refractors give you flat fields right out of the box. No separate field flattener, no calculating back focus. Just attach your camera and start capturing. Especially great with larger sensors, these refractors are made for those who want performance and simplicity. And then there's speed. Rasa and Hypographs. Two systems, blazing fast. These are astrophotography sports cars pulling in light at unmatched speeds. Perfect for broadband imaging of faint nebulae, even under less than perfect skies. But they come with precision demands, tight tilt control, spacing accuracy, filter challenges. They're not for everyone, but if you tame them, the results speak volumes. Finally, we arrive at the simplest of them all, smart telescopes. Sea star, dwarf, Phaonis. These are not just tools. Their experiences. Point, tap, image. Astrophotography without the cables, the learning curve, or the hours of processing. Limited in flexibility, yes. But perfect for those who want the cosmos in their pocket and on their phone. And so, with all these choices, here's the truth. No telescope is perfect. But each is perfect for someone. Your goals, your workflow, your patience, your passion, that's what decides. So now that you've explored the telescope types, the workflows, and your imaging goals, let's put it all together. Maybe you're a visual observer. You've spent nights with an eyepiece chasing galaxies. You already own a decent EQ mount, and now you're ready to step into imaging. You don't need full automation, just something powerful and familiar. An eight inch Newtonian astrograph on a sturdy go-to mount could be your perfect next step. It gives you a big aperture, fast optics, and the kind of deep sky performance that opens up an entirely new layer of the universe. But let's be honest, Newtonians come with quirks, collimation, balance, a bit of tinkering. And if that's not your thing, there's a cleaner path, a refractor. A well-made ADED or APO series from Ascar delivers crisp, color pure stars with almost no fuss. No collimation, no bulky mirrors, just reliable sharp optics. Yes, you'll need to calculate back focus. Maybe add a flattener or a reducer depending on your sensor. But once dialed in, it's smooth, dependable imaging night after night. Or maybe you're a photographer. You've worked with cameras before. A DSLR or mirrorless is already in your kit. You value portability and simplicity. You like to travel light and shoot under dark skies. In that case, a star tracker and a small APO refractor like the Ascar FMA 180 Pro or even just a fast prime lens lets you start capturing nebulae without getting bogged down in complexity. No observatory needed. Just you, your camera, and the night. You might be an absolute beginner. Maybe you've seen photos online and thought, I want to do that. But the idea of polar alignment, guiding, and software setups? Not appealing. You want to see results, fast. In that case, a smart telescope like the Sea Star or Dwarf could be your gateway. Just power it on, connect your phone, and let it handle everything. You'll be imaging the moon, planets, even galaxies, without touching a mount or computer. If you're a beginner with a healthy budget and looking for more than just a smart telescope, something with automated tracking and easy usability, here's our advice. For wide field astrophotography, consider the Ascar SQA 55. It delivers ultimate sharpness and crisp stars across a wide field, perfect for capturing expansive nebulae and star clusters with stunning clarity. If you're looking for something a bit more versatile, without having to calculate back focus or worry about extra accessories, the Ascar 71F is an excellent choice. With a built-in flattener and a FASTA 4.9 aperture, it delivers sharp, color-accurate images across the frame. Its slightly longer focal length makes it perfect for both wide-field nebulae and smaller galaxies, 
offering flexibility in your targets. Lightweight and travel-friendly, it pairs beautifully with modern mounts like the AM series, or even with a smart camera like the new 585 MC Air for an easy, automated workflow. Both give you superb image quality and flexibility to grow into more advanced astrophotography without overwhelming complexity. Or maybe you're the kind who wants total control. You like to understand how every part works. You enjoy tinkering, cables, filters, scripting, automation. You want to build something that can image remotely, all night, unattended. That's when a rich accretion or an advanced refractor like Ascar PHQ or FRA series with a dedicated mono camera, filter wheel, Nina, and a solid mount becomes your toolkit. It takes effort. But you'll love every moment of dialing it in. And if you're someone who travels, someone who wants to shoot from a mountain pass or a desert plain, then you need something ultra portable. A setup that's airline friendly, fast to assemble, and still delivers great images. Think Ascar 65 PHQ with an AM3 mount. Flat field out of the box. No flattener to fiddle with. Fully automated and ready to image in minutes. Just unfold a line and go. Every one of these setups reflects a different kind of imager, a different kind of you. There's no single best telescope. There's only the telescope that fits your experience, your goals, your lifestyle. You've probably noticed we've recommended quite a few telescopes from ASCAR, and that's no coincidence. Their lineup is broad, thoughtfully designed, and offers outstanding value. From beginners to advanced users, their gear delivers consistent, high-quality performance. At Edisla, we take that a step further. With dedicated after-sales support that ensures you get the most out of your setup. Of course, there are similar offerings from other brands too. Just make sure. Whatever you choose meets the key criteria, optical quality, build reliability, and practical usability. When your gear matches who you are, everything clicks. The learning becomes natural. The results become inspiring. Lastly, let's talk about what not to do, because choosing the wrong gear can kill the joy before you even start. Don't chase focal length too soon. It's tempting to want those big detailed galaxy shots right away, but longer focal lengths amplify every little error. Tracking, focus, guiding, everything becomes harder. Start balance, then grow. Don't ignore weight. That 10 kilogram telescope on a five kilogram mount, that's a recipe for frustration, wobble, and lost nights. Your mount is the foundation. It has to carry your gear confidently. Avoid using visual only scopes for imaging. They're not corrected for camera sensors. You'll end up fighting stars that look stretched or annoying aberrations that ruin your frames. It's better to start with optics designed for imaging. Don't underestimate the mount. A high quality mount makes all the difference. You could have the best telescope in the world, but if your mount can't track precisely, your images will suffer. Invest smartly here. And above all, don't buy before you truly understand what you need. Astrophotography is a process, a journey of learning, experimenting, and growing, not a one-time product purchase. This has been Adisla's guide to finding your perfect astrophotography telescope. Wherever you are in your journey, we hope this video has brought you clarity, confidence, and inspiration. Subscribe, stay curious, and above all, keep looking up. We'll see you in the next video.